I finish it. I get it. The goal is to say, I understand it. I get it. And then go forward and live it. And if all you do every now and then is take one verse and say, this is my verse for the month. And you just read it until you can live it. Trust me, the word of God will have transforming power in your life. The word of God is one of those things that don't take a whole lot to change it. Just take a little bit that you're willing to live, and it will transform your life. First Peter chapter 1, verse, verse 3, and we'll read through verse 9. And the word of God says here, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, somebody say mercy, mercy. has begotten us again unto a lively hope. Somebody say hope. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is incorruptible. I can't wait to preach to that part, but it ain't tonight. <laughs> and undefiled, and that faith is not away, reserved, planned, purposed, preserved for you in heaven. Who are kept, this is tonight, by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time wherein ye greatly rejoice though now for a season if need be ye are in heaven through manifold temptations and the trial of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes though it be tried with fire might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Who having not seen ye love, in whom know now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory, receiving in the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Want to hold for a thought just for a few moments tonight? Freedom, the hope of the slave, part three. Freedom, the hope of the slave, part three. Now you know I would be a mean, cruel teacher uh, if I did not take a few moments and catch up those who are the fresh faces in the household tonight. So let me very quickly just get you caught up to what the Word of God has been sharing with us over the last three messages. We learned, beloved, already that we were designed by God with two distinct purposes. One, we were designed by God to have fellowship with God. God wanted a family. God wanted fellowship. God wanted friendship. But also, he wanted someone that could reflect and reciprocate his love back to him. And we do that by being designed for God. We are designed to serve the Lord. Listen to me. I don't care what you've been doing with your hands. They were made to serve the Lord. I don't care what you've been doing with your mind. It was made to serve the Lord. I don't care what you've been, where you've been taking your feet. They were designed to serve the Lord in fellowship with Him. I will be then is to be cautious uh, over the next few days and as we prepare to celebrate the emancipation and freedom from this worldly slavery that we don't overdo it and take our freedom to a place of foolishness by casting off not just the restraints of man but even casting off the righteous restraints of God. We must remember that there are some restraints in life that are needful for us. That we cannot do anything we want to do. We cannot go anywhere we want to go. We cannot say anything we want to say and be pleasing unto God. There is a restraining power of God that we have to allow to continue to rest rule and abide in our lives. 
So we have looked at Peter's distinctions. He has laid out for us a few things that will help us discern between man's slavery and God's servitude. Now we learn, beloved, that as we are looking at the righteous, uh, for, for the righteousness of servitude as it compares to the wretchedness and recklessness of slavery, that the thing we should look for is mercy. God's servitude is a servitude or a service that is filled with mercy. When we are tired, He gives us rest. In fact, you don't have to go very far, but to the familiar passage of Scripture in Psalm 23 that says, He will make you lie down in green pastures. He will send goodness and mercy following after you all the days of your life because service into the Lord is a merciful experience. Not only, beloved, do we discover that it is a merciful experience to serve the Lord, but next we discover that it experience to serve the Lord. When we are enslaved to sin and when we are enslaved by man, there is no purpose, there is no point, there is no plan that they have for us. But when we serve the Lord, God knows the plans He has for us. Plans to prosper us, to make us a good success, to give us a future, and to give us hope. And now, tonight, now that we're all caught up, I would like to lift up yet another distinctive of service as unto God that helps us discern when we have moved from slavery of sin to the sanctified service of God. And tonight, that distinctive is found in verse 5. Verse 5 again says in 1 Peter chapter 1 that we are kept by the power of God. Beloved, when you are serving the Lord, you are empowered. I want us to understand, beloved, when we serve and are in slavery to men, when we are in slavery to sin, we find out We find ourselves unable, uh, without the, the strength uh, to make it from day to day, from moment to moment, from situation to situation, from circumstance to circumstance, because slavery is all about uh, taking your power. Sin wants to take your power. All those other types of things that are not of God, whether it be something you drink, whether it be something you smoke, somewhere you go or something you do that is not a service of God, but it is a constraining some master and an enslaver of your mind, of your heart and your soul. Its desire is to take your power to the point You've heard it. Folks say, I can't help it. Huh. Oh, I wish I had some help again. Go ahead. That there are things that wish to enslave you to the point where you will be powerless against it. Where you will feel like you cannot help yourself. You have no strength to fight it, no strength to overcome it because the point of slavery is to strip your and for the only experience of power for you to have is that which wishes to subvert you and subvert and submit you and put you in slavery. Their design is for your idea and identity with power is something that overwhelms and overcomes you. Not something that sustains you. Not something that strengthens you. Not something that enables you. Remember, we talked about this, that Satan's desire is to distort our relationship with divine reality. God desires to give us power, but many of us don't want power, and many of us don't like power, because Satan put us in circumstances where we come against distorted power. Yeah. We come against distorted power, in fact, the only experience with power that 
Satan wants us to have, the type of power that we see during Chattel and colonial slavery where there was a master. And his only job was to make you feel powerless. In fact, beloved, there were masters of the masters who would teach them how to break those who gave some semblance of strength or power.
it lends us to be enslaved to a powerless mentality. But that is just a deceptive lie of the enemy who wants us to behave in such a way because if we have a disdain for power, see, especially to the young people, listen to me. Satan's job is to make you not want and not like power. Because you had such a negative experience with those who had it. And so when you no longer want power, you no longer want to excel in life. I wish I had some help in here. I know people who have the degree, who have the education, who have the ability to be the boss, but won't do it because they are scared of power. They are scared because power does come with some responsibility. Power does Education is power. The word of God is 
is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Discipline is. Respect is. Yeah, but see, you can't get that power unless somebody with power is around you to empower you. The teacher is there to empower you. The preacher is there to empower you. The leader is there to empower you. And when you have a negative relationship with power, I realize that he 
got the faith to keep him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again because it's right there. It's right there in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 5. It's right there. It says if you got the faith, he got the power. Lord have mercy. I'm going to try that one more time because you act like you didn't hear what I said. I said if you got the faith to serve him, he's got the power to sustain you while you serve him. And if you, if you don't believe me, that he's got power to protect you, he's got power to sustain you, he's got power to deliver you, he's got power to change you, he's got power to lift you up and turn you, he's got power if you don't believe, ask David. David begins to write the 121st of Psalms. And he said, let me tell you something. I learned how to lift up my eyes to the hill. Because it's from the hill that my help comes from. I, I know what you're thinking. That don't sound like much, but let me twist it a little bit for you if I can. He said, I learned to look to the hill because that's where my power comes from. He said, my power is not in my physical stature. He said, I did not go up against Goliath in my physical power. I did not go up against Goliath. I did not go up against Goliath in the power of the armies of Israel. I went against Goliath in the power and the might of God Almighty. I didn't look at the army. In fact, they tried to put the army on me. I told you can hold that bro. But my power is not in some shepherds of all. My power is not in a king's authority. My power is not in a posse or group of boys behind me. My power is in the power of the name of the Lord. Yes. Yes. Oh, and I challenge you tonight to fall back in love with power. Amen. To fall back in love with the power of the Most High God. To look to the hills again and know that your help and your power and your strength and your enablement can come from the Lord. Amen. The Bible goes on to say that David continues to talk about this power of God. He says, listen, not only is it my help, not only is it my strength, he says, but this power, this power will not suffer my foot to be moved. Oh, I, I wish you ready. There are things in this life and folk in this life that will try to use their power to move you. I wish I had some help here today. They'll try to use their power to push you out of a position that God has made for you. But beloved, I challenge you to grab hold of the power of God. And they'll try to push all
challenge you to make him your personal Lord and Savior. I challenge you to change your masters from the masters of this world, the masters of among mankind, the master of money, the master of fame, the master of riches, the master of things, and get a new master. One that will empower you. One that will support you. One that will sustain you in your service unto Him. This is your moment. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. Lord, I need your power. Lord, I need your strength. Lord, I need your support. Lord, I need you to sustain me. Lord, I've tried to, to be a, a good son of servant to the men of this world and all they've done is push me down. All they've done is let me down. But tonight, I want to make a change. I want to do something different. I want to have a master that picks me up. I want to have a master that will lift up my head. I want to have a master that will hold up my arms when I get weak. I want a master that will give me his strength, give me his power, and help me to run home when I don't feel like running. This is the opportunity we have. This is the opportunity we have this is the invitation that he is extended. Come and get the power. Come and experience the life-changing power of Jesus Christ. Maybe you have an addiction. You just feel like you can't quit. You feel like you can't stop. You can't stop going there. Can't stop doing that. You can't stop smoking this. You can't stop drinking that. I'm here to tell you, I serve a God that will give you the power to stop. That will give you the power to quit. That will give you the power to walk away. That will give you the power to turn your life around. And all you've got to do is commit today to serving Him. Maybe there's one today. A man, a woman, a boy or a girl, you don't have to be ashamed. Every single one of us saw it powerless. Yes. You don't have to be ashamed tonight that, that you're in a powerless situation. You're in a powerless position. Everyone here has been there before. Yes. But the better man that has made all the difference. And tonight might be your night to meet this man named Jesus who 